Nightmares on Wax Special Dub Plate Mix This is my cave. This is where I execute, like I say, all my uh, sort of creative ideas. And uh, this is the mothership, known as my Valve uh, TLA audio desk, which has been an absolute dream in helping me bring him, especially on Feeling Good, the Feeling Good album, bringing the warmth uh, to my productions and stuff and that. It's not a massive space. I've had sort of bigger studio spaces before, but I like to feel like I'm still in my own living room, if you know what I'm saying, or still at home when I'm, I'm kind of making and doing music. So welcome to Feeling Good. You better get ready. My connection to Ibiza started 1988. First time I got on a plane, first time I left England, I came here on holiday with Kevin, Boy Wonder. And uh, yeah, we came for a week, went out of money after three days. And in 1999, me and my wife came here. That was the first time I could afford to hire a car. So I actually went and saw the island. And it just changed for me from that point. And we came back to England in Leeds, what was our dream home first full recording studio there and we were like this is just bricks in it <laughs> in a real Yorkshire accent and um, we were like what are we, do what are we doing here should we move to a beef yeah 18 months later we were here you know the closest I think it, as, as far as being musical at home was that my dad had two gramophones one in the kitchen one in the lounge but none of us were allowed to touch them and then this thing called hip-hop happened I was getting into break dancing I walked into this guy's house and he's scratching on his mum's hi-fi with this big volume knob. Right in front of my eyes, I just like, gotta teach me how to do that, man. So Kevin taught me to scratch and the rest of that day I met the rest of the crew and I became part of this crew called Solar City Rockers. Breakdance, champions, 1985. It was a championship that we entered. We all had Moda Pelle track suits dressed in grey with a red trim. We had a graffiti suitcase made out of um, leather. We dropped that on the dance floor, we threw down and we won the competition. Because we were Solar City Rockers, that's, how we, that's what we did. <laughs> we brought the sunshine to any town. <laughs> it seemed like endless discovery. We had pirate radio up here, but it was mainly reggae and stuff and, and street soul. So we tune into like Radio Caroline or we tune into like um, Robbie Vincent or we tune into John Peel. So you know John Peel will play at least three records from New York. Everything was all about being, having the freshest shit, but you don't let, you don't let anybody know what that is. You're soaking records in the bath until the label came off. But that's what you do just to hide the break or hide what it was. Down here, underneath my decks, I'll have a lot of old school albums and, and like breaks and loops and stuff like that. Always to, always to hand to sample, just to pick randomly, not in any particular order. Then over here I'll have hip hop 12s. At the top of here I've got house 12s mixed with my own catalogue. Up there you've got loads of disco and funk 12s and here's a lot of my house collection as well. Um, like I say, no particular order because I don't think there's an order when it comes to having a record collection, you know, you just kind of feel where things are, you know what I mean? Sometimes it's a pain in the ass because you can't find some things, but you know what? Maybe that tune's not meant to surface at that time. Let it roll, get ball, I just can't hold, let it roll. Through doing these bedroom mixes and entering DMC competitions that were here back in the day and all that sort of stuff, kind of natural progression was wanting to make a record. And me and Kevin just started experimenting, basically. Big Daddy Kane record had come out called, called uh, Set It Off and we sampled the, 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 the intro of that, which is lyric, well, get bold, they just can't hold. We just sampled the let it roll and made this house track. And we got our night downbeat that we're running and we goes to go play this on cassette and the tune drops and the, just raised the roof off the place. So I goes to London, goes to the studio with this cassette to get mastered in the studio. Just kept saying to this engineer, more bass, more bass. <laughs> Me and Kevin pressed up 2,000 copies on our label Poverty Records, which only had one release, which is this release, which is an EP. Um, as you see, it's got uh, tracks in here, a track called Let It Roll, which I've spoke about before, sampling Big Daddy Kane. It's also got the original Dextrous uh, track on here, which was the track we signed to walk with. And on the other side, we've got a track called State and the Fact, with me rhyming and with Boy, Boy Wonder on there. It's more of a hip-hop track, more of a hype hip-hop track. This was dropped in July, July the 16th, 1989. And we managed to sell 2,000 copies in two weeks. I was going to store, going to record stores, and I'd be there when the man in the van would be there at the same time. And he'd be like, yeah, I've heard about this, I take 25 off you. And it was like that, man. I was just like, 
And I went to Sheffield and went to a record shop called Fun Records. And the guy behind the counter there was just like, oh, I've heard about this tune, blah, blah, blah. We're thinking about setting up a label. And I got a call off Steve Beckett, I think it was the end of August. And just said, hey, do you, do you, fancy, uh, do you fancy remixing Dextrous, one of the tracks off the EP, and putting it out on Warp? And we were like, yeah, why not? Okay, so when we used to finish mixing tracks and uh, have them what we think would be ready, uh, after we got them sort of mastered, we'd get uh, what we call dublets, dublets, sorry, back in the sound system days, uh, known as acetates, and we'd take these to the club, test them out, and see if the mixes were perfect. We'd do that with all the club re releases that we did. And here's uh, a very iconic one, which is Dextrous, uh, WAP number two, the second release on WAP Records, all of uh, 25 years ago. <laughs> because we were about DJing and rocking clubs and stuff, you know, we didn't even call it house music when it came out. It was just, it was like, it was just like funk to us because we come from the funk and the old days and the dancing and all that, it was all connected. When we did A Word of Science, the first, the, when, when we got the opportunity to make that album, you know, we were two like 20 year old kids. So what do you do? You throw everything at it, everything that's ever influenced you. And um, we were listening to the KLF Chill Out album. And it was the most shrewdest thing I've ever done in my life. I was sat there and I'm going, you know what? I'm going to make my own Chill Out album. I'm going to make my own hip hop Chill Out album. And I'm going to call it Smoker's Delight. Just like that. <laughs> like, and that's what I did. So this is the infamous Casio SK1 keyboard, uh, sampling keyboard that I was able to purchase in like 90, sorry, 88. Uh, had 1.6 seconds sampling time on it. What that meant was that any samples that I couldn't fit in that, that, that few, them few seconds, I had to spin the turntable as fast as possible just to catch a bar and then play it low down the scale. And then I'd record it back into the four track, just triggering it like that. But there was one particular uh, uh, sample I couldn't do, and that was Summer in the City, but Summer in the City by Quincy Jones, uh, just because the sample was as long as it was and it would never fit on here. So I, I was dreaming that one day that when I get a good sampler, i.e. this uh, Akai S950, that I would sample that record. And that record became Night's Interlude, which became Night, Night's Interlude, which became Lenny Wee. Out of all the records and out of all the albums, that's the baby because that changed my life, you know? This tour's gonna be pretty exciting because it's gonna be performing songs I've not performed for like, as long. You know, and I'm combining that with obviously Feeling Good, which is the latest album. Um, you know, I'm gonna combine obviously the, through the catalogue, the lineage of, of the whole story of Nightmares and Max with the live shows. Now I'm really back on the mic, you know, like, you know, even doing the lead vocal on B.I. Do on the last album was a kind of a big step for me. I felt really nervous about delivering that track, even though the message in the track was about being yourself. The real heartwarming sort of thing about doing this project and, and you know, celebrating this project is that everybody I asked to do, to do a remix was honoured to do it. This is what this has been about, is really, really getting back to why you even make music. What is this relationship to music? It's because it's fun and I love it. Full stop. I'm not